Hey, my name is Chad. This video, we are going to do a little more work trying to get my alpha brass dialed in for my six Creedmoor PRS rifle. Okay, so first things first, you might notice it looks a little bit different. My Osmo Pocket camera had a bit of a wonky screen situation happen and I had to send it in to get repaired. So it looks like I actually just got the email today that it is fixed and will be heading back to me. So should have that by the end of the week and get back on track for next week's video. But for now, uh, we're back to the camera that I was using beforehand. So hopefully I remember all the settings and this looks halfway decent. But I wanted to do, come back and work on this alpha brass situation. So what I did is I went through, got all of the new brass primed, all with my CPS, my competition primer seeder. So they are all super uniform on their primer seating depth. And before the last match, I did just minimal testing, like three powder charges total. And I thought my speeds were a little bit slow, but I was grouping well and able to use that data with the Kestrel and get out to the hits that I needed to at distance. So I wasn't super worried about it for that match. Since I've got a little time now before the next match and I added a hundred extra cases. So I've got 200 total cases with this Alpha Brass. And uh, my idea is I would like to get it all somewhat uniformed up and kind of go run through it all, get it fire formed to my chamber and then start the resizing process. And during that, we need to take a look at this. So this is from Cortina Precision, and I picked up their mandrel die. I had several people, you know, mention that I should be adding one of these into my steps if I want to get, you know, maximum consistency every time I resize and prep my brass. So I picked up the mandrel die from Cortina, and I got the 241 mandrel. So that should be what I need for my particular uh, bullet and brass combination. So this will be probably what I learn about next weekend because I've never set one of these up. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Stay tuned, you don't want to miss that kind of bit of a cluster because I'm sure I'll mess it up the first few times. What I've got set up here is gonna be some six creed cases i think i'm just going to load 10 of each of three more powder charges so what i had before was 39.1 and that seemed to work pretty well i'm going to go ahead and try 39.2.3 and 0 0.4 um, i did try to jump up quite a bit and just see what it would happen i tested a 40.2 and my speeds jumped from in the 29 25 area all the way up to 3068 and my extreme spread was like 24 like it was all over the place and on target it was all over the place so we definitely don't need to go that high so i think if i just try three tenths um three different one tenth uh variations i'll be able to see if the charge that i have now is going to be the best one for my rifle or if i can find something that's a little bit better and slightly more consistent I will um, probably start tinkering around with the tuner just to see if that has any effects after I get a good powder charge settled on so as always running the H4350 and uh, we'll just get into this okay so we'll go ahead and load some up in the hopper here Don't you just really enjoy the smell? Like, that is a very nice aroma. So I like to just lightly put my lid on because, you know, I'll tend to have to drop some out and uh, pour some from the pan back inside. Go ahead and get my nice area 419 funnel with the proper head on it. And what I like to do with this lockdown block from EP Integrations, I'll give them a good squeeze. I've got the rubber feet attached on the bottom so it does not slide around without an, a good amount of force on it. But that just keeps my cases solid. So my 
funnel isn't super wobbly. And uh, we'll just go ahead and zero this out and start with the first load of 39.2. And we'll run these through. So obviously I'm sure everybody has seen plenty of loading at this point. So what I'm gonna do is just start getting a full row of powder filled. And then as soon as I'm done with that tin, I'll transfer them over to one of these MTM blocks. And then at that point, I will start uh, seeding bullets as I am letting the next row get full of powder. Okay, so we have got the tin loaded or powdered up with 39.2. Now I'm starting this row of 39.3. And while I'm getting this one prepped, I'm also going to start seeding bullets over here. So as that's running through, I'm going to go ahead and hopefully everything is set about where it was before. When I'm doing a test like this, I will take a, you know, just a small carp and I'll load up like my lowest to highest powder charge from the latch up to the hinge. So these will be all of my uh, 39.2s and 39.3s will be the middle row. Top row will be the 39.4s. We're down here at the range. I got uh, all my ammo loaded up. And we're just gonna see how this goes. Um, and these should all be within, uh, we'll call them like two thousandths of the base to ogive measurement on the seating depth. It'll be like 2.222, I would say plus or minus maximum of two. Like if, if they're short, they're 221. If they're long, they're 223. Most of them are 223 or 222, 222 and a half, right in that area. So in theory, these should all be fairly consistently seated. In theory, everything's set up down there. Now my target down there, uh, I have two dots that I've already shot at. I've already marked those. Luckily we didn't get any rain, so I left it up overnight. So I think I'm just going to go down the left side and maybe like top to bottom, just work my way down or bottom to top. I'll see what looks best down through the scope. And uh, we'll just give this a whirl and see what happens. Now my first shot, that was cold bore, and I had uh, realized that I hadn't really done any even moderate cleaning, so I pulled a bore snake through a couple times just to get like a little bit of build up from the last match. So my first shot was 2901, way slower than what it should be, and then everything else was like around 30 to 35. So I think to be fair with myself and the other results, I'm going to remove the 2901 and uh, doing that it gives that session summary uh, 10 shots standard deviation of 4.3 and extreme spread of 13.5 so the slowest was 2922 and the fastest was 2936 with an average of 2932 so a little bit faster than my you know one tenth below and um, from what I can see through the scope, it looks like it'll be a decent group, but that's going to be out of uh, four rows. And then I think four rows going up and down. I'm in the middle left side row starting at the bottom. And so my next one, I'll probably just move up one and see what that looks like. So he's right to the right of the brush right there, right in front of my finger. I'll get closer. You'll see him jump away. Hey buddy buddy, hey buddy buddy, he's nibbling on some grass. Hey 
Hey buddy, buddy. Wow, he's letting me get real close. Oh, there he goes. Nice little cottontail. So that's the first time I've seen this happen. Um, took 10 shots, but I'm only showing eight registered on here. Not near as much of an increase as I was expecting. An average of 29.37 <clears throat> had one at 29.52, and that's kind of what I was expecting to see. My extreme spread was 27 with that, but my standard deviation 8.3. So, you know, that's probably one of those I just had an odd shot in there. Okay, obviously uh, we're after sunset, so. I went and put a flashlight down there so I have some light on the target. Makes it a little easier for me to see. Uh, we'll just run through these last 10, see what happens. Now that one had a few weird numbers. Um, like they were kind of mostly in the 40s. I had a 38 and 49, 50, 45, 42, 32 and a 21 that one gave me an 11.8 standard deviation and a 46 and a half extreme spread so you know that one something weird going on there and then the other one i missed two which is the first time i've ever missed anything with this so um not really sure what to think of that but i seem to have a good charge i don't know now the most important part let's see what the target looks like this was when i was checking zero with the Lapua loads that I had before and then this was some that I shot last night It was also dark and I had forgot my flashlight. So no uh, benefit there. So this was the first loading I mean Maybe Three four tenths of an inch That one held pretty good vertical, but I got a little horizontal stringing and that one, I just pegged that line straight across, but I did some back and forth and that could be totally me breathing or moving funky. So, I mean, overall, any of these groups would be probably plenty acceptable. And these are 10 round groups. Um, so I did lose my uh, aiming point here at one, one of those shots. So then I had a few more on that side and I know I pulled one. All right, if you like staying out at the range so long that it gets too dark to see anything, make sure and get subscribed because I'm doing this all the time down here and uh, especially when it's hot in the summer. So I really would appreciate it if you would hit that button down there, get subscribed, follow along. I am getting prepped for my next PRS season and I'll be coming out here more and more in the evenings trying to do a little bit of uh, closing by flashlight but hey had fun doing this and uh, got a little more data not quite as definitive as I was hoping it would be but it is like 105 degrees out here so you know not the most ideal conditions I have sweat dripping in my eyes but to go over everything like my 0.1 grain higher load was a 4.3 SD and a 13.5 extreme spread. That's probably what I'll end up running with because that's the same powder charge I was using in my Lapua ammo. And uh, and that was the group with that. I mean, that's pretty good. And then this was the next 10th up and then the next 10th up. So, I mean, either, any of those, I'm going to say, are more than adequate for what I'm doing. Um, it seems, from what I've seen... Uh, the more powder I get, the wider my numbers are getting. But I would say that with my rifle and this powder, ammo, you know, all the combinations that I'm doing, any of these <laughs> powder charges would be plenty good for PRS. Obviously, I'd want to do more testing for like bench rest or something where you're trying to only hit the middle. Um, but I just got to hit the target. And I mean, this is plenty, plenty good. So I might do a little more testing. Please, down in the comments, let me know what you think. 
I really need some kind of direction if I should stop testing and just start working my brass and start getting it ready to, you know, reload. This is still my fire forming loads on all this brass. So that's one thing I'm concerned about. Um, I noticed after my Lapua, after I resized and, you know, ran through for the second firings, it was not the same as the fire forming uh, initial firings on every one of those brass pieces. So seems my numbers spread out a little bit more, but I think that this alpha brass and adding the mandrel, I should be able to clean that up a little bit, but it's very possible that after I run through the processing the brass steps that I'll have to do a little more tweaking, but I mean, I'm kind of liking that one down here at the bottom and uh, maybe with a little turning on the tuner, I can even close it up a little bit more. I really should have brought my flashlight down so I had a good consistent aiming point for all of these like I did up here where I stayed good on elevation and uh, just had some windage drift there. So I don't know. Like I said, still kind of new to this, but I'm getting deeper into it and any tips and suggestions, I really do appreciate that. Well, that's going to do it for this one. I've got to finish getting loaded up, get home and get ready for my work week to start tomorrow. Thank you very much. Everybody that watches my videos leaves me a thumbs up. Get subscribed so you can follow along. And I really thank everybody that drops comments down below and lets me know what you think about my progress so far. And if you have any suggestions for what I need to look at trying next, I am taking the mandrel suggestion and we are going to work that in very, very soon. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening and a wonderful weekend. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.